is the Abbott Falls. And this is in Candia, New Hampshire. Didn't even know this existed. Why don't we get down to the bottom here? Like I said, I'll walk around this bike. The sign said stay on the trail, so I really don't want to disobey it. I'm not sure. I think I can. I don't know. Now yeah, look what the, what's going on here. It's like I said, I don't want to get off the trail. Though I think I'm off the trail now. So this would be a nice place if I had the 360 camera, but of course I don't. But, you know what, I'm going to stop right here and we'll put the kickstand down and we'll take a walk around this bike. It's getting muddy, that's for sure. So, this is the bike, like I said, this is a electric uh, X Premium. Um, it does have bigger tires on it. Uh, I, put, uh, I put those big knobby tires, it comes with knobby tires, but uh, it's a little bit more aggressive than what was on it. Uh, the the whole bike pretty much comes white and uh, the fender's on it and um, you know I use my uh, label maker on all these uh, bikes and try to make them my own I gotta change the Gary's DIY adventures there so run my new uh, Gary's e-bike adventures um, had a shout out there from uh, from Jerry T and I think he's um, something uh, e-bike tips something like that i'll put a link on it uh he gave me a shout out today so i'm going to give him a shout out today too so uh he's a he's uh he's been out there plugging away at this uh youtube thing for a while now i was looking at how long he's been on here and how many videos he's got out and uh his subscriber count is not even where mine is so you know uh, give him some love guys get over there and uh and subscribe to his channel he's a very interesting guy um, he's like the rest of us. He's uh, he's uh, older like us, and um, I, I I don't know if he's retired or not. He doesn't look uh, doesn't look that old, so he's probably working. But uh, I know he's he does this as a hobby. So don't I. I mean, eventually I'm going to be retired, and you know uh, it'll give me something to do. So like I said, so we got the battery packs on this. Um, this is a 28.8, 28.8 over here. Um, I got my spare tube here uh, just in case something happens. We we're obviously throwing a lot of mud on this bike today, um, but that's okay. We'll pick this leave out of the derailleur though. Um, like I said, got the factory sprocket on this one. Uh, Mid drive, shocks in the front, folding bike. Um, got the battery in the back, battery in the tube. We got the two up on the back. This is my little pouch. It's got all my um, my battery balances in it. Got my blue wind seat on it. Yeah, I could use some more blue wind seats. Uh, so blue wind, if you're out there and you want to send some seats out, um, send me them uh, in different colors too. A nice blue theme would be nice for this bike. I got a red theme on another bike. Got a green theme. I know you guys have got the uh, got the colors. So be nice to have it. So this is like I said, the David brand new bars. Um, I did change out this stem here. Um, he has just a regular BMX stem that goes on it. I did want a little bit of height. I wanted to rake it back a little bit. So I put that on there. Um, his, like I said, comes with a, just a BMX stem on it. But this is a great, um, you, get, you can adjust the height a little bit. It folds down. Um, it's, uh, it's nice. So when I did these decals, um, this battery is black. So I uh, did white first. That way there, the, uh, it kind of hides the, the battery. I don't know, I got my lock on the back. At the, like I said, this, this basket, I moved from bike to bike. If you see, we've been out here, we're at 98%. Both batteries are at 98%. So we haven't even touched these batteries, guys. This bike is probably good for a good, I don't know, I would say, uh, 160 plus miles probably get out of this bike. Hopefully we can keep following this thing around and get out of here. But like I said, I want to walk around this thing and, uh, and show it to you. Um, 
So let me uh, move the camera back up so you can see what's going on. This bike, I do have the, um, the um, I have a little thing of pepper spray here. Um, I put them on most of my bikes, and the one I've been riding lately, I realize there's no pepper spray on it. i got to order a couple more of these things. So I got them. So, like I said, I would never use it unless I absolutely had no other choice. I love my dogs. I love other dogs. So we get a little ice here. Now, just in case you guys think I'm kidding about the... Uh, the fact that winter's coming. I got a nice little stream here. You can see it. This is uh this trail's pretty nice. Like I said, New Hampshire's a beautiful state. I'm gonna miss it when I uh go south, but I'm not gonna miss the uh the winter. If I ever start getting manufacturers sending me some bikes to review, I found a beautiful hill near my house. Every time I would go out there, I'd take, you know, I got the deer brand new, did an unboxing, did a horrible job at that. But, you know, I'm trying to, to I do unboxings like I see everybody else do them. And next time I do an unboxing, I'm doing it my way. Um, I don't know. I think people get bored with it. So there's a guy out there, and I'll probably butcher his uh, handle. I don't watch him that often. And I hated him when I first... Uh, um, started watching them. Uh, I was like, well, let me just throw it out there. He's got a he's got like 70,000 subscribers, but it's Happy Trails or Tails or Trails. I don't know. Happy something or other. Happy Trails, I think, probably. And uh, he's out in California and um, younger guy. And uh, uh, I'm watching him doing unboxing. He's just, you know, ripping the box and just, I mean, tearing stuff out of it, throwing stuff. And I'm just like, uh, I got to slow it down here. I don't want to beat the crap out of my batteries again. Um, yeah, he's throwing stuff around, throwing the charges around. And I don't know, I just, you know, they're sending him bikes and he's just, to me, was disrespectful. And, um, and, and, and that was my first impression of him. But I got to tell you, this guy, I don't know if he scripts it or he's just that good or it's just that natural to him. But he is so good at going over every aspect of the bikes. I mean, he beats the crap out of them. So um, let's put it this way. I don't know if I'd want to buy a bike used off him when he was done reviewing it. But um you definitely know what the bike can do when he's done with it. And that's not what I'm saying. I wouldn't do that. But uh, he just uh, a little more fast-paced about it. And we, like I said, really on target with um, all the information. It's just, I, I sat there with my wife and I said, this guy is just so good at, at uh, doing bike reviews. No wonder he's, I mean, he's got a new bike every other day, for crying out loud, that he's reviewing. Um yeah, I would be willing to pay for the right bikes. I I made an offer on a couple of uh, couple of uh, bike manufacturers that on particular bikes. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Not bad. Hello. How you doing? Good. You? Good. Friendly guys, and they're on acoustic bikes. I think this is where I saw all the. Um, the rock formations. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm coming up on all these rock formations. Yeah, so anyways, back to where I was. So, uh, don't have to worry about uh, Russ's right watching me and getting mad because I call him acoustic bikes. So, I know he watches some other people, but he doesn't let on. Let's put it that way that he's watching anybody. He's a good guy. Does a good job at what he does. Got a ton of of bike manufacturers that are uh, after him to do bike reviews, and he doesn't have a ton of subscribers. There's other guys out there with uh, with more subscribers than he's got. I'm gonna stop here for a second. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but check out those rock formations up there. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to push the camera up so you can see it. That's pretty cool. 
I don't know, you know, this is uh, the glacial part of the world. I'm sure this big crevice over here, probably gl glacier probably hit those rocks and stopped here and melted. That's why that uh, swamp's out there, who knows? I mean, again, it's all up in the sides here. It's really cool looking. I know, I get fascinated pretty easy. Nature is a, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Other people will look at that and go, man, we could blast that thing out, put some houses up there, you know, with a view, make a fortune. Me, I say, leave it alone. I don't know, um, you know, I'm sure this is conservation land or something that they put this rail trail on. Somebody's got to own it, right? I mean, I don't know if they turn it over to the towns and, um, and say it's yours or... I know that um, the other rail trail there, the paved one, so it's paved in... Um, it's paved in uh, Manchester, it's paved in Londonderry, and then when you hit Derry, New Hampshire, it's a mud pile. Um, they haven't put any money into it at all, so that's why I think they probably turned over to the towns, and the towns have to, um, to fund it. And I'm sure there was some federal money when these things first got, got you know, turned over to the, to the towns. I mean, somebody had to pay to have the tracks pulled and filled in. And here's these manhole covers I was talking about. Just can't figure out. I mean, obviously, you know, maybe... Maybe in this town or whatever, whoever owns, I don't know whether they're storage grates or what, but maybe they said, um, you know, we'll run the storage down there or, and um, they used some of the money that was set aside for that to run them down these trails and kill two birds with one stone. Who knows? We're at 2.30. At some point here, I'm going to turn around and head the other way. Um, I can't imagine... You know, 3.30, the sun's pretty much going down. How you doing? No personality on that one. But all my battery-operated equipment here is working pretty darn good. So I give it the seal of approval, guys. So Jerry T there, he's got a uh, Milwaukee jacket that he was using. And, uh, yeah, these things are pretty good, guys. I mean, I got just got a vest. It's a heated vest. It's on the lowest setting I can get. And uh, I'm warm. I'm probably a little too warm right now. But I'm also working at it, like I said, on a mid-drive. It's a little bit of uh, a little bit of work. A friend of my son's um, asked if he could drop my name to his fiance's father because he wants to buy an e-bike so i said yeah no problem i don't i don't mind talking to anybody about it. i mean i love talking about e-bikes so he hits me up and he wanted to get this bike and he put a deposit on it and it looked like it wasn't gonna like the company's falling apart and it's not gonna happen and um so he said, you know, I, I'm trying to get my money back, but I want to get a bike ordered. What do you suggest? So he said, you know, I want to buy an American bike. This one was a Canadian bike. So he says, I want to buy a Canadian or an American bike. I don't want a Japanese or Chinese bike. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, so I looked at the bike that he said it was. The company was in Canada. And um, yeah, that, it's, it's totally a Chinese bike. You know, like all the other bikes, you know, electric isn't building bikes in the U.S. They pretty much direct ship them to you. I mean, all my bikes that I got from them, I believe, came in from New Jersey. So they flew in to New York or whatever um, and uh, and then was sent to me. And I don't care. I know what, what I'm getting. But this guy, you know, so I said to him, I said, look, there's... I said, even Trek is not made in the United States. I said, they have like one bike, because I looked it up once. I said, they literally have one bike and it's like a $20,000 bike. And I said, the frame is built here in the United States, but the rest of the bike is uh, totally Chinese, you know? So yeah, we're at 14.62, uh, so I'd uh, be turning around pretty soon here. So anyways, back to this guy. Um, so, you know, I, I'm like, well, what do you what do you want? So I said, do me a favor. 
I said, answer some questions for me. I said, uh, how do you want to use the bike? How much effort do you want to put in? Um, are you going to be riding road? Are you going to be riding trail? Are you going to be using it as a mountain bike? Um, how far do you want to go with this thing? Do you want full suspension? F you know, uh, four inch tires, street tires, you know, um, two inch tires. So, you know, I, I sent them this questionnaire to try to put them in a direction. And he says, my friend says uh, uh, mid-drive bikes are the best to get. So I want a mid-drive bike. That's all he says. I'm like, okay, thank you. I said, I sent them back a thing saying, I, I just want you to understand. I actually sent them some YouTube videos explaining mid-drive bikes. And I, just, I said, I just want you to know what a mid-drive bike is. And um, I'm going to ask you if you're a handy guy or not a handy guy. Because mid-drive bikes um, tend to need a lot of maintenance to them. There's a lot of stress on the chain and the... Um, gears um this this bike that i'm on here i bought this bike with 13 miles on it the man that bought it was a 350 plus pounds and he bought it to get exercise on not realizing that it has to be shifted like a car that i also made the guy aware of that i said it's like having a standard transmission car just be aware of that so there was 13 miles on this bike and the gears were trashed so i the, the one of the first things i did to this bike was change the uh free wheel on it so i think this is going to be the end because i ain't going through this tunnel another tunnel that's full of water so we came down we're at 15 mile 15 point 1.8 miles and we are headed back in the other direction now so we'll make it a 30 mile ride guys so yeah so i i had to change the uh, free wheel on this thing and i measured the chain um with a uh, wear gauge to make sure the chain was all right which it was he just uh, butchered the uh shifting it i'm sure so, you know, I made the guy aware of that, and he's like, oh, uh, I didn't know that they were that, that high maintenance. And I, you know, I told him, I said, well, quite honestly, um, you can have to change the, uh, the free wheels on this about every 300 miles if you're changing gears a lot. They, the gears end up chipping, and um, you'll get slipping. And that, that was what, when I first got this bike, it was like, click, 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 click. It was slipping all the time, so... This guy with the bike, you know. So anyways, I said, all right, look. I said, if you're really hell-bent on getting a uh, mid-drive, would you be interested in a belt drive? Because the belt drives, um, they don't have gears, not conventional gears, and they, there's no chain, you know, it's a, it's a belt. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started looking at those, but he says, um, he's got to have a thumb, th he's got to have a throttle. I don't care if it's a thumb throttle or uh, whatever, but he needs a throttle. Okay, I, and I get it. I want a throttle to take off too. And that's what he wanted, he said, was to be able to take off with the throttle. And uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, I get that. Well, mid-drive bikes, so they don't put throttles on a lot of them. Um, Trex, I believe Trek is now starting to put throttles on them, but they, they didn't have throttles on them. So, when I started looking, I'm like, first of all, the belt-driven bikes are higher end to start with. And I don't think a guy minded paying the extra money, but um, I'm like, dude, I, I can't find them with a throttle. Oh, I gotta have a throttle, okay. So then he goes, he gets a hold of me. This, this went on for a weekend. He said, oh, I, I drove down to this place and I looked at this bike. I'm like, okay, they don't make a mid-drive. I said, so you're looking at a hub motorbike now? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, okay, um, so is that what you want? Because I have a whole bunch of bikes I could suggest if you want a, uh, you know, a hub motor. No, 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 I want the, uh, I want a mid-drive. Just for the fun of it, I threw him a couple hub drive bikes. And I'm like, hey, these, these bikes are like, if I was going to recommend a bike for what you're saying you want to do, I would recommend these bikes. So one of them was the Wyatt bike. And he's like, oh, I really like that bike, but uh, it's, it's too dangerous. I'm like, okay, 
Why is it dangerous? I'm thinking to myself, but I'm not gonna argue with them. I know it's a pretty uh, quick bike. I mean, that thing will be up into the 30s, but honestly, uh, you know, people have no problem driving motorcycles. And um, if I fall off this bike at 30 miles an hour and I fall off a motorcycle at 30 miles an hour, I'm not gonna be any less hurt falling off a motorcycle. This lady's still walking this bike. I wonder if she's got a problem with it. You all set with the bike or uh, yeah, just, yeah, okay. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure, like I said, my wife is out here. I'd want someone to stop and help her. So you guys are watching this and I don't know if you can see my battery bar, but it'll still be all the way full by the time we get home. I have the capability to really battery these bikes up. It might be overkill, but uh, I wouldn't have bought the second 28.8 battery, but I bought the second one when I was building the uh, all-wheel drive bike. I'll have to get that out one of these days. We'll, uh, we'll do a ride on that one. It goes, like I said, it goes 30 miles an hour and it uh, doesn't really like to go much faster than 30. I mean, down hell it will, but I kind of thought that thing would fly with a, uh, you know, the equivalent of 2,500 watts, but it doesn't. The, uh, the motors are, um, I don't know, there's no way to like override them. I think you get what you get. And the controllers limit them too, so if they only got uh, 20 watts or whatever coming out of them, 30 watts or whatever. You know, you got to get in there and take the controls apart and shunt them and yeah, I'm not doing that. Not into burning stuff up. My uh, cargo bike, I love the way it rides, so I'm not going to do anything to it, but I had thought about buying a... Uh, I was actually going to take the... Uh, so the two batteries, if you combine them, it's like 92 volts. So if I put them in series, I could have 92 volts. And I've got the two um, the battery packs that I'm running on this, so I'm like, I got plenty of battery. So I, I was looking at 92 volt motors and um, I can get some pretty big motors, like 5,000 watt motors. And then I said to myself, what the hell am I doing? I think I was doing it more for, uh, to make an interesting video. And I think at one point I said, you know what? I can't keep spending money like this trying to make interesting videos. So I kind of cooled it on buying and building. And you know, guys, bike manufacturers I'm talking about, I look at, uh, Look, look at who's watching my videos. You look at who's riding these e-bikes all over the place. I'm not talking about the Sarans, but uh, these normal e-bikes, folding bikes, uh, the mountain bike style. We're all in our freaking 50s plus, you know? So, um, you know, the 26 for a, I consider myself average size at 5'10". Um, the 26 is a tad high. I mean, um, I, like I said, I have an interest in the, uh, in a couple of these 26 inch faster bikes. I'm a little worried about how I'm going to fit on the bike though. Um, cause I, I don't want to step through. I do, I, I would get a step through on a heartbeat, but this, um, this wobble that you get from the step throughs, I just don't, don't like. Yeah. The, uh, like I said, the step throughs just, you get that wobble in them. This thing is, you would not believe the wobble that's in this frame. It's crazy. I mean, I've never heard of anybody having a problem with the thing other than the fact that it wobbles, but, uh, I mean, this one doesn't, I can let go of the steering wheel on this one. I really don't want to do it on a trail, but it doesn't shake like hell like the, uh, the Magic Cycle does. But, I mean, not that you can see it, but it gets freaking super gimpy if I wanted to. It just, uh, the frame is not a solid frame on these things. If I get the, another bike, probably not going to get a step through. All right, guys, that was the battery change time. I'm hoping my mics work out this time. So um, normally I run a wireless mic, but uh, my buddy Dan at uh, E-Bike Nation, he uh, he lost his. He so I recommended this particular mic to him. And I, I'm using this mic, um, the DGI, DJI, oh God, I butcher that all the time. Um, DJI uh, wireless microphone. It has a magnetic mount. You've seen me uh, in my studio. It just kind of hangs on my shirt, which is nice. But I never hang it on my shirt. I use the clip. So, but I've always worried about losing it. So Dan says he buys this thing brand new. He loses it like his second time out. And um, I'm like, Christ, uh, maybe we should put a string around him. And he's like, yeah, I will the next time. And um, 
So I thought about that today, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be on the trail and blah, 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 you know, bouncing up and down. Maybe I should really uh, think about this. So uh, I, I, got a, I got a mic on this one. Um, I got the unit that normally hangs on my shirt in my pocket, but I got a, this is a you could put a mic on it. So I, put, I mic'd it up, and uh, the mic's corded, so. I have two corded mics on me, so out of the two, I should have one audio that works. Like I said, uh, you know, Dan, E-Bike Nation, the, uh, I got this uh, battery pack is on this thing, so I haven't had to deal with the, uh, the battery in the GoPro. And Dan, that's what you should do is run those battery packs. It's actually in the summertime, you could see where the rocks were a lot better because they're a different color for the most part. You get all the leaves on it this time though, so. Yeah, so when, they, when you shift this thing, there's a cutoff on the motor so that um, it doesn't put as much strain on the, um, the shifting. Otherwise, the minute you shift it mid-gear, uh, when it's jumping to co the cog, um, and if you run the power, um, it would do some damage to the, to the chains. Oh yeah, the sun's still up there. Makes me feel better. Got there for a minute. We'll be going home in the dark. Even though I'm looking at the clock going, nah, it doesn't get dark until four. Well, somewhere's around four. Yeah, it's a little bit bumpier section here. So, uh, Richard at E-Bike Reviews, I got your uh, your blue wing seat on here today. I want to thank you for that suggestion there, buddy. Because uh, this is a pretty nice seat. But I went to take this basket off the other bike. And I had changed it around on the other bike because the basket, the way it sit, it, it either sits too far forward or too far back. So I had uh, done a little customization to it to, to get it to sit in the right spot on the other bike. And, uh, you know, then I went to take it off and I'm like, oh yeah, I customized this thing. And um, I had to take that apart. Not a big deal, but... Uh, like, I really ought to buy another large basket. I've got two, two or three small baskets. And uh, I almost bought the baskets. They were on sale. I had it in my cart. Could have bought the whole set. Forget what it was. They were cheap. I mean, these basket sets, I think, are over $100 normally. And they had it for the Black Friday sale. Um, I bought a couple things from uh, Electric during that sale. And uh, I should have bought the basket set. But I was like, you know, I've already got two or three of the, the front baskets, and it's another basket, and I really just want the rear basket. And But uh, I don't know. Should have bought them, like I said. My buddy uh, Richard at uh, E-Bike Reviews thinks I should get one of those... Uh, electric 26 inch bikes so that's totally illegal but there's no one out here especially this time of year to patrol these trails like i said they're gonna have um, snowmobiles blasting down these things at 70 miles an hour pretty soon there are plenty of trails in new hampshire for uh, the bikes they're not supposed to go over 35 miles an hour on them but they do um, i used to have atvs we used to ride those trails all the time just to have them just to go with the kids and stuff load them all up in a trailer and go out and use them ah here comes this stupid tunnel i gotta remember to drop my gears when i hit the bottom of this And I screwed up. I screwed up because I uh, I shifted gears when I got up to the top, which uh, shuts the motor down. All right. So we went through two of those, so we got another bridge coming up. Another tunnel, I mean, a bridge. Eh, you know what? Let's jump on the road. Just to go through the time, we'll get back on the trail just as soon as uh, we can. 
So we'll go up in a seven gear here, see what kind of uh, speed we can get out of this thing. Let's throw it on uh, throttle only. Slowing down, 20 miles an hour, in seventh gear. So we're getting 20 miles an hour now, we're basically going down a hill. So yeah, 20 miles an hour throttle down a hill. So I said these mid drives, you gotta, you gotta pedal them. Think about that before you buy a mid drive. I'm back to pedaling now, an hour 21 and a half, going up a hill. I think that's the same bike, no plates on it either. He's just uh, loving life there. Now we gotta shift a little bit. Like I said, when you shift, you uh, you lose the, uh, the motor ability, so you slow down quite a bit when you're going up a hill. So there's the beep, beep, beep from my radar, letting us know cars are coming. As I did move the radar over to this bike, I can move it from bike to bike. Like I said, good investment, guys. At 26 miles an hour, 27, and I hit 28. And at 28, I can feel the motor cut out, so it's doing its job. So, we just went onto the highway. So we missed that tunnel. Here's the trail. Back on it we go. How you doing? Looks like grumpy pants. There's a fat tire uh, mountain bike. Well, here comes another tunnel. This is the last one again, but this one's not too bad. I'll knock it down the first gear and use the throttle through it. Hopefully. Yeah, I will be all set in this one. Just gonna stay in the middle, that's all. Bike technology just keeps going and going, so yeah, they get a little bit better, and then you gotta remember, your batteries are only good for so long, so, you know, keep them for two years, and if you're getting tired of them, move them on before you gotta put batteries in them, because you get a free e-bike with a battery. Thank you. You're all set, thank you. All right. You know I got one guy out there, Bruce, so, Giving a shout out to Bruce too. Bruce is a, I think it's a Bruce Electric. Um, he's got a, a new channel out there. Check him out, guys. He's a uh, he's from Maryland. So yeah, we were talking uh, Richard at uh, E-Bike Nation. Thinks I should pick up one of those electric 26-inch uh, bikes. Um, and uh, I probably should. I don't know. If they, if the controller was anything like the one on the uh, the cargo bike, I might be interested. I mean, a cargo bike zips along pretty good, so it might be interesting to have it in a 26 inch version. Hey, you doing? Thank you. Dan and the e-bike nation out there, he's probably cursing me for not saying on your left on your left but uh i say on your left if i think they don't know i'm there i was a little uh hesitant on her because i knew she had a headphone in but she obviously had it down low enough to know what was going on i will warn people when uh when uh i think they're gonna come off through so we just went by some homeless people they were setting up camp for the night Electric bikes, I throw them uh, a bone. I got a lot of their bikes. Magicycle, throw you a bone. Rip one outdoors there. He, uh, I'm pretty sure he's got uh, two manufacturers, you know, sending him out some bikes. And that guy's been out there. I was looking at his, uh, his thing. It looks like he's been doing it for four or five years. So he definitely deserves it. And his followers, they might be, uh, might be few by their standards, but uh, they're solid, you know? Um, it's one thing you got 5,000 subscribers and only, you know, I don't know, uh, 45, 
hundred of them aren't, aren't really tuning in on a, on a daily basis or whatever. Uh, I think Rip's got pretty much, you know, all of his uh, guys watching him, so that's a big plus. Funny guy. I was making fun of him. He, uh, he watches my videos, so he'll see this. So I was making fun of him. Uh, he's talking about a BLT, and I don't know what the heck he called the tomato, but... You know, I commented to him, I said, you say tomatoes funny, and he's like, I talk funny. So, yeah, I get, uh, people, Jerry T today says I, uh, sound like I'm going to drop the F-bomb in any second because, uh, I, uh, I uh, sound like a uh, New York person. These videos won't come out until after Christmas, I bet, so... It's before Christmas right now, guys, by a couple of weeks, and I'm sure by the time these are out, it'll be after Christmas. But I'm glad because, um, you know, trying to trying to get this through this winter and have uh, have stuff to do. So, so I'm going to break the law here, and I'm going to ride down the sidewalk a little bit. But I'm going to come down now. So in New Hampshire, it's against the law to ride on the sidewalks. I mean, they cut little kids a break, but they don't cut adults' breaks, so. Like I said, I bought this bike used. This guy wanted, like, all the money for the bike. He's like, it's only got one mile on it. Well, it didn't have one mile on it, but uh, it had 13 miles on it, but that's still brand new. I get why. And I'm like, dude, there's no freaking warranty on his bike or anything now. Um, and I'm like, you know... <laughs> You want, you want as much as you paid for it, and uh, I just don't want to do that. So I think he wanted like 13 for it. I forget what this bike goes for now, but I think he wanted like 13 for the bike, and um, I offered him a grand or something like that. To start, you gotta start somewhere. Well, back and forth a little bit. I think I offered him a thousand, uh, another thousand, so 1,100 or whatever. No, nope, I want the 13 for it. Like, okay, so a month goes by, and um, I hit him back up, because it's still for sale. He says, no, I'm not selling it for the 11, but um, I'm really getting sick and tired of people offering me, you know, $500 for it and stuff. He goes, you're the one that's offered the most. He goes, what will you come up? And um, I think I said, you know, I'm not. I, 11's all I'm going to pay for the bike. And um, he ended up saying, all right. But he was going to keep some of the stuff. I think he had a basket and stuff. Um, I'm like, I don't care, whatever. And um, so I went up there to get it. The guy freaking lived in a trailer and stuff. I felt bad for him. I ended up giving him the, the 12 for the bike. and So I give him the full money for the bike. Um, well, not the full money, but I gave him a you know more money than he was asking for and uh i said well you're giving me the baskets and stuff right oh no i want that stuff he goes i'm gonna sell those separate I'm like dude i just gave you a hundred bucks over for the bike he's like yeah I, I don't care i said all right fine what will you take for the stupid basket and it was a basket and um a helmet it was the electric helmet too so um which i never use but he says uh well, I want $100 for it. I said, I just gave you an extra $100. He said, I'll give you 50 bucks. My last offer, I'm out of here. So he goes, all right, I'll take it. So I gave him $50 for it. So the guy ended up with almost as much for the bike as he originally wanted. And uh, whatever. I tried telling him, too. I'm like, dude, you did some damage to this thing. I got to throw some money at this bike. Ah, oh, no, come on. There's only a one mile on the bike. I couldn't have damaged it in a mile. And... He tells me he goes to Florida, and uh, the bike stayed up here all winter long in uh, a trailer with no heat on. So the batteries froze all winter, so.